welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome to the 197th episode of The Simple Sophisticate. Today we're going to talk about music, specifically classical music. Now, if you're not someone who listens to classical music by choice or you just haven't really dabbled into it, trust me, I was someone like that as well. And I have recently become someone who has incorporated it into my everyday routine as a way to, well... I'll explain more as we get into it, but that is what we're going to talk about today and specifically what the many benefits are for our health and our lifestyle when we tune in to classical music. Now, before I get into those benefits, today's petite plaisir has to do with a show that I have enjoyed over the past few years, and it has recently returned for its fourth season, and I think it goes well with what we're talking about today, and I think you'll enjoy it as well during these winter months that are gradually getting us to spring. Anyway, stay tuned at the end of today's episode, and I'll share a trailer of the fourth season as well as why I enjoy it so much. All right, but let's get to our topic about classical music. What are the many benefits to listening to it? Well, let me share them with you. As a young girl, I took piano lessons, like I have a feeling many of you did as well, and I will admit it was not the greatest joy of my life. A timer would have to be set for me to sit down for even 30 minutes to practice, and even then, I would get up from time to time to check and see how much more time I had to play. I know. I feel horrible saying that now as an adult. I don't know what I was thinking, except for I didn't enjoy doing it. Now, as an adult, I wish I would have continued to practice. I wish I knew how to better play the piano. But hindsight's twenty twenty, and as kids, we don't always make the best decisions. So no, I was not someone who found joy in playing the piano. However, when my mom would sit down and play and let the notes ring melodically throughout our home... I thoroughly enjoyed listening and still do. We still have that piano in my parents' home, and from time to time, I will get the opportunity to hear her play and watch her fingers dance across those keys. There is a tranquility that is shared when such harmonious tunes without lyrics are played. To my ear, it is quite peaceful. Perhaps that is why as well I am drawn to jazz, as I do prefer music without lyrics when I am working, relaxing, and simply going about my day. I enjoy bringing my stories to the notes rather than hearing someone else's. Perhaps that is a lack of imagination on my part, but when there are no words, the rhythm is mine to dance with and let my mind wander. Now I know most songs have a history or a reason why the musician or artist created them, but sometimes you forget about that, or maybe you don't even know about it when you start listening to that particular song. And so it becomes your song. And I think that's why I'm drawn to the lack of lyrics. Now, don't get me wrong. Lyrics have their place. But for, as I said, background music to my day or to get my day started or to unwind my day after it's been stressful, not having lyrics doesn't add any more stress and in fact soothes me. Now, as many of you know, I have always loved jazz since I've started this ep- this podcast, since I've started the blog. I, I share different musicians and different songs that I love. And in fact, that love started when I was a teenager. And I have since begun to welcome more classical music into my life and regularly so, beginning this past fall, as I shared in episode 187. Now, many of my students over the years have been actively involved in the symphony and orchestra, and successfully so, so I do find myself learning from them about music, about different instruments, about different terminologies, and so therefore I am by no means savvy, but they teach me something every single year I learn something or I'll go to one of their concerts and I will just appreciate even more. In fact, I was playing my classical station that I typically play in my classroom from time to time. And this one particular song came on and immediately one of my students said, Oh, is that? And I just sort of stopped in my tracks and thought, 
oh my gosh, that is amazing. Quite the trained ear. They could pick up and figure out exactly which concerto that was. Or, And to be honest, I don't know what song it was because I was just blown away by what? Because there, there's no way I can really identify too many of these songs. But I do know I enjoy listening to them. All right, so let's get to the five benefits of listening to classical music. Number one, it reduces stress. If you find listening to classical music relaxing, then it can indeed reduce your stress levels. Upon listening to classical music, your body releases pleasure-inducing dopamine and inhibits the release of stress hormones all of which generates a pleasant mood. Now, the key is to understand what you find relaxing. And I think that's the most important component here because if you don't find it relaxing to listen to classical music, that benefit's not going to happen. But if you do, make it a regular practice and observe your body and your mind begin to relax, which will then enable you to think more clearly and thus make better decisions. So that's number one. It reduces stress. Number two, it also increases your ability to think abstractly. Now, you may have heard of the Mozart effect as it was coined in 1993, and it was discovered by Dr. Gordon Shaw of the University of California, Irvine, as it caused a temporary spike in an individual's IQ after listening to Mozart. While the findings need to be clarified, no, listening to Mozart doesn't make you smarter, but what it does do, Shaw states, is, quote, warms up the brain's ability to think abstractly, and that's what we often associate to those who are intelligent. They're able to make connections that are not readily put in front of them. They can make parallels that aren't offered to them on a plate, and so that listening, he found, is something, listening to Mozart, that is, loosens up our brain and just kind of enables it to be able to make those connections. Ooh, I find that very interesting. All right. So I still have three more points I want to talk about as to being the benefits of listening to classical music, but I would like to introduce you to this week's sponsors very quickly. The Simple Sophisticate is sponsored this week by Casper Mattresses. As someone who protects my eight hours of sleep each night as absolutely necessary for a productive next day, the mattress we sleep on each night is an important decision as well. The original Casper mattress combines multiple supportive memory foams for a quality sleep surface with the right amounts of both sink and bounce. Its breathable design helps you sleep cool and regulates your body temperature throughout the night with over 20,000 reviews and an average of 4.8 stars across Casper, Amazon, and Google. Casper is becoming the internet's favorite mattress and all of Casper mattresses are designed, developed, and assembled in the U.S. Available at affordable prices because Casper cuts out the middleman and sells directly to you, your mattress will be delivered right to your door in a small, how do they do that, size box. Enjoy free shipping and returns in the U.S. and Canada. As listeners of the Simple Sophisticate podcast, you will get $50 toward your select mattresses by visiting casper.com slash SS and enter the promo code SS. Note this offer is only applicable to select mattress purchases and terms and conditions apply. You can be sure of your purchase with Casper's 100 night risk-free sleep on it trial. So visit casper.com slash SS and enter the promo code SS. The Simple Sophisticate is also sponsored this week by Shaker and Spoon Cocktail Club. Making a signature cocktail for friends or that casual dinner party you are planning next month or for the Oscar party you're going to host next weekend is a fun idea. But for me, I wouldn't know where to start when it comes to choosing the cocktail of the evening. Shaker and Spoon has your back. With their easy-to-follow recipes and instructions, how-to videos, and precisely measured ingredients all sent to you in their monthly cocktail subscription box. Think Blue Apron for cocktails. As a subscriber, you will receive three brand new original recipes created by world-class bartenders each month. For example, I just received their Rye Oh My box and one recipe is created by Carrie Ha 
of Alcove's Big Bar in Los Angeles for her take on the classic mule. Now that is a drink I have been curious to try, but of course, knowing I have the expert guiding me gives me the reassurance that the cocktail will turn out great. Upon opening up my box, which arrived at my door neatly packaged, everything including the limes and the ginger beer were there, along with easy to follow recipe cards that even show you which glass would be preferred. I felt confident I would be able to make this drink. And if I still didn't feel all that confident about how to do it, I could go watch the how-to video at shakerandspoon.com, which I did just to make sure. The ingredients you receive will be enough to make each of the drinks, there are three, for four people, so 12 cocktails in total. All you have to do is provide the liquor, and they even provide recommendations of which type of, in my case, rye whiskey would be their preference on their website. So just one bottle is all you need for the entire box, all 12 cocktails. What I appreciated most about Shaker and Spoon's approach is that they simplified the process. There is no need to search endlessly for that hard to find ingredient or ingredients or purchase a full size bottle of ingredients you will only use once. Needless to say, it is a simply luxurious approach to hosting your own cocktail soiree. Now that is something I can toast to. And I have some good news for you as listeners of the Simple Sophisticate podcast. You will receive $20 off your first month of their monthly subscription of $50 a month when you use the promo code SIMPLE. Visit shakerandspoon.com, peruse their site, and see which option would be best for you or perhaps as a gift for someone in your life who enjoys entertaining. And don't forget to enter the promo code SIMPLE. Welcome back. Let's get to the three remaining benefits of listening to classical music. All right, number three is it heightens your EQ. Now, you may remember that EQ represents emotional intelligence, something that I've talked about in a previous podcast episode. And it was found, I found this very interesting, it was found in 2001, Southern Methodist University did a study and they shared their findings that revealed participants were more, quote, expressive and effusive with their comments and more forthcoming as well, end quote. Perhaps when we choose to listen to classical music, as we relax, our walls begin to come down a bit more. We are more willing to be vulnerable and less quick to react. So make sure you're aware of your environment, I guess I should say as well, when you're listening to classical music. And so I think I, I'm reflecting on when I'm listening to classical music and I'm doing it in the morning in my home. I'm doing it in my classroom. I'm doing it in an environment where I know the people that are going to be around me. So I, and I want to be relaxed and I want to be myself and I want to be open. So just knowing that that's a benefit is beneficial for relationships. It's beneficial for myself just to relax and be able to be myself. So that's number three. It heightens our EQ. Number four, it increases our focus. A study done in France published in Learning and Individual Differences revealed that students who listened to a one-hour lecture with classical music playing in the background scored better on the corresponding quiz of that lecture than those who did not listen to the music. Why? The researchers proposed that, quote, the music put students in a heightened emotional state, making them more receptive to information. It is possible that music, provoking a change in the learning environment, influenced the students' motivation to remain focused during the lecture, which led to better performance on the multiple choice quiz. So that's number four. It increases our focus. And they did find it was just classical music, not other music and not any music at all. And so not silence either. So classical music was the one thing that they found to increase those scores when they compared those three different instances. And the last benefit is that it helps you fall asleep more quickly. The University of Toronto discovered that when classical music was played, when you begin to settle into bed, participants in the study were able to fall asleep more quickly and stay asleep longer. Why? The study found that the music by Bach, Brahms, Handel, Mozart, and Strauss offered, quote, rhythms and tonal patterns that create a meditative mood and slow brainwaves, end quote. So that's number five. It helps you fall asleep more quickly. Now, the inclusion 
of listening to classical music in my everyday routine because I listen to it as soon as I wake up in the morning. I have my app on my phone and before I even get out of bed, I'm kind of easing into my day listening to classical music. And then I do listen to it in my classroom as well. Not every day in my classroom, but I do listen to it a couple times during the week at least. And it has become a form of simple self-care. Having a sound mind to navigate successfully through the day is an invaluable tool, but it is one that can easily deteriorate if we do not tend to it. Many readers shared their favorite classical radio station a few weeks ago, and a lot of those stations had free apps as well, and I have listed them on the show notes. So you can visit the blog, the simplyluxuriouslife.com backslash podcast 197 to get the entire list and links and to see which ones have an app as well. And an unexpected benefit I am finding is, and this is something that I didn't include in the list because it's not necessarily a scientific finding, but for me, I enjoy listening to the hosts of each of the programs that I listen to because they speak about each song They often share the history and other intriguing information about exigence or the different compositions, um, how they came to be or different places they've been played, or they'll take me away virtually to another country as I'm getting ready in an old Oregon, United States of America. I mean, so it's nice to just kind of let my mind wander to different places in the world as I'm getting ready in the morning. The two stations I listen to, I listen to WRTI.org, which is based in Philadelphia. And then I, because of a reader's suggestion, I started listening to KUSC.org, which is down in Southern California. There are so many great radio stations out there, again, and they're free. That's what's wonderful about them. I may never pick up a flute or a violin or an oboe, but I certainly am finding that I appreciate even more those who do and those who have written these musical creations. Now, one other thing that I did as well is I compiled a playlist on Spotify, of which there are many others for classical music as well. So this is just, again, my creation of 13 different songs that I really enjoy. But there are so many other great playlists on Spotify, as many of you already know. And my playlist has 13 songs. It plays for just over an hour and 15 minutes. And um, again, that's on the show notes. And then if you follow the simplyluxuriouslife.com on Spotify, you'll find this playlist as well as my Escape to France playlist. And you can listen along. So visit the show notes, the simplyluxuriouslife.com slash podcast 197. Now I'll be right back with this week's Petit Plaisir. Welcome back. This week's Petit Plaisir is the fourth season of Mozart in the Jungle, which airs on Amazon Prime. So you watch it for free if you have an Amazon Prime membership, or you can pay for the episodes if you don't and enjoy it. Now, I thought this would be a perfect pairing to today's episode as we're talking about the benefits of classical music. But this is a lovely little comedy. Each episode is about 30 minutes long. It's set in New York City for the most part um, with regards to the New York City uh, Symphonic Orchestra. And it's fictitious. It's based on a book of the same name. and um, But it's in its fourth season. And it just kicked off early February, and you begin with the maestro of the orchestra, Rodrigo de Souza, and his relationship with Hailey, as he calls her, or Haley um, Rutledge to the rest of us. And throughout the course of the season, I finished it last weekend, I'll admit it, I've watched the whole thing, couldn't help myself. Um, it takes them to North Carolina to see her parents, and then it takes them to Japan as well. There's some beautiful um, scenes in Japan this season, but it's a playful glimpse into the musical world that I know absolutely nothing about, as I've mentioned at the top of today's episode, and you get to hear some unique sounds, some beautiful sounds, and there's just a a delight in watching it. It's just a lot of fun. So I'd like to play for you the trailer so you can get a taste of the humor, the storylines, and um, the different characters. So here is the trailer of season four of Mozart in the Jungle. Five, six, seven. There's something wrong with you. 
somebody new, isn't there? Yes, I like. We've been having a lot of sexual intercourse recently because I am the boyfriend. He's your boyfriend now? I think that he actually doesn't know what that word means and just likes to say it a lot. <laughs> yes, what? What? They're calling you from the conducting competition. They want to scout you next week. Oh, this could change our lives. Behind the podium, high I've just made yourself huge, bigger, like a vision. If you blow this chance, I'm gonna kick your ass. Oh. Mm, wonderful. Here, let me. For a special concert, the legendary Maestro Rodrigo de Sousa. I don't know what is happening in my head right now. Music has stopped talking to me. I don't totally feel like I belong here. But well, you belong. You, you're here with me. I'm in love with you. I like. People are gonna think whatever they want about you, no matter who you're dating. Your job is to not give a shit. Concentrate on the music. Complete honesty? Yeah. Oh my god, you're gonna win. Didn't I tell you she was gonna be great? You're the best, I like! What's new and lovely about this particular season is the focus shifts from Rodrigo to Haile or Haley as she decides to step away from just being an oboist and try to become a conductor, a conductor in a world where there are very few female conductors. And they really dive into that subject matter, which I think not only is it timely, but it's, it's appreciated as a viewer um, as we see her struggle, but we also see her courage and her willingness to stand up for herself, find that courage to do so. So, You'll find a link to Mozart in the Jungle on today's show notes, the simplyluxuriouslife.com slash podcast 197. The entire season is on Amazon right now, and um, I think you'll enjoy it if you haven't already started to watch this series. I hope you've enjoyed this week's Petit Plaisir, where each week ideas are shared to make the everyday all the more enjoyable. Tune in at the end of each Monday's podcast where I'll recommend a book, a film, or a recipe, anything that is a simple pleasure to satiate your sophisticated taste. Now, as we've been doing, um, each week is sharing a review that listeners have so graciously taken the time to do on iTunes, and I want to share with you one that is from a new listener, and I believe, and I correct me if I'm wrong on your handle, you are, uh, your handle is Long Leg Snad, and the title is Simply Exceptional. Quote, I found this podcast three weeks ago. I just can't stop listening to it and applying the concepts that speak to me. The tips, the simple pleasures, and the list goes on. Shannon's voice is so soothing and a delight to listen to. I've started to play it right before starting my morning drive. I went all the way back to episode one. I've also subscribed to the blog, and I've checked out the book from my local library. Simply, it is a daily reminder to slow down and stop to enjoy the simple, luxurious things and moments that make life life and they gave all caps to life an exclamation point thank you so much for taking the time and in, and infusing your review with your voice i so enjoy hearing from readers but also getting to know you a little bit as you share how you listen to this podcast so thank you very much for taking the time now if you are a listener who's enjoying this podcast and you have not left review yet but you want to you may just hear your review on an upcoming episode just like long leg snad. All right, everyone. I hope you have a beautiful week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. For more ideas and inspiration throughout the week, stop by the blog, the simply luxurious life.com or pick up the book, choosing the simply luxurious life, a modern woman's guide now available in paperback as well as ebook and audio versions, which are available on audible iTunes and Amazon. 
and to receive exclusive news as well as an extra dose of inspiration to jumpstart your weekend, subscribe to the Simply Luxurious Life's weekly newsletter, which arrives in your inbox each Friday to enjoy with a hot cup of tea or a morning cup of coffee. Until next Monday, I'm your host, Shannon Abels. Bonjour.